Welcome to our Good Friday worship experience, giving thanks to the Lord for the sacrifice of Jesus to take away the sins of the world. Isaiah 53 invites us to, us to this humble Eucharist. Jesus was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Surely he was born our grief and carried our sorrows, yet he esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and by his wounds we are healed. Let us say together this world, this is the word of the Lord. This, this is, is the, the word, word of, of the Lord. Lord.
to then all our sin Well, I serve scrubby hill neatly crossed the Roman way. The naked eyes skewered like worms dotted burgundy with blood, as clear to the passing eye as three billboards by a roadside. Death to the thief, death to the rebel, death to the author of life, not even important enough to murder on his own. He, just one in three, the uprooted vine stretched out on a barren tree. The anointed poured out, the gift scorned, the able disabled, the healer torn. The way barred, the truth buried, the life killed, the door bouldered. The king mocked, the reconciler reviled, grace, beauty, glory, in spite of spittle defiled. The light snuffed out. Darkness at noon, the world dancing to its self-enthroning tune, the shepherd like a lamb to such slaughter. The teacher taught his final lesson in torture. 
I know, I know on this good Friday that Sunday is but a blink away. But this Friday is each and every year our why day. I look up from the water eddying out of the bathroom sink and see the billboard on the wall in front of me. Whose rebellion required such grim reparations? For whom would love submit to such savage butchery? And the face on the billboard mouths slowly back. Me. Man of sorrows, what a lake for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to. said on the cross, it is finished, it is finished, finished. Is it? I don't think so. Not until the funny little woman on the Friday bus means more to me than I do to myself. Not until I read or write the message of your pain-filled eyes that I must take the ones you loved and left behind to live with me as my responsibility. Not until I freely place my stock of cherished certainties like sad surrendered weapons at your injured feet. Not until the public and the private faces of my troubled Christianity can meet and know they recognized each other when they met. Not until I know the names of more than half the people in my street. Finished. No, I don't think so. Not yet. How are you feeling at the end of another strange week? My son wonders if today will be the day that his salary gets cut again or this time he gets laid off, or worse. He's in his 30s now and he's frustrated at this turn of events, feeling that every time he starts to be assured a little bit about life, something like this happens. I'm only 30 years old, he says, and been through three major things that have changed the world in my life. And who says that won't happen again and again yet? Every time I feel like I'm just getting on solid ground, that solid ground gets taken away from me. Are those some of the same thoughts that you're having as well? Many of us know the same fury, fears, and frustrations. It all feels like a waste, like a missing out, not how it's supposed to be, and we're tired. As we all think things like this and more, can we confess that we will get through this, but it may leave a mark? The thread is that this changes us going forward and not for the better. If you're already thinking that, then I invite you to listen to a few words from Hebrews chapter 2 today. On this Good Friday, 
Hebrews 2 links the cross of Jesus Christ with our lives and says the cross is just not something for long ago and far away, but matters right now for what we're going through. So listen to a few of its verses. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. These verses put together the crucified Messiah and our tough, terrible times. Four times. In these few verses, Hebrews 2 highlights the suffering, sacrifice, and cross of Christ, and four times connects the cross to who we are and how we live because of Christ's sacrifice. The cross is not just some historical note to remember, but it is a testimony to God meeting us in the here and now of our lives. The cross matters for today. There at the cross, the divine God meets us in the physical, material world. The spiritual transforms the physical. We are transformed from guilt to innocence. So even these broken days don't have the last word or the final say in who we are and how we are to live. We're reminded that though the physical weighs heavy on us, We are more than just physical beings. And life is about more than just the material. In fact, because Jesus suffered as a human being and died in the body, he connects his divine grace with us. Spiritual things like faith, hope, and love are what we need to face physical challenges of this day, even loss and pain and death. Look at the language of Hebrews 2, revealing God in Christ united to you and me by the cross. Let me just quote a few of the lines here. By the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Then the pioneer of their salvation made perfect through what he suffered. Then he too shared in their humanity And then, for this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way. So we read this in the context of the cross so that we get it. So that we finally say that after the cross, there is no doubt that Jesus is God with us and God one of us. The words fully and perfect refer to a complete 100% identification It's not that Jesus wasn't always perfect, morally and spiritually, but that he perfectly, that is completely suffered any and every human suffering, even yours. Tasting death for everyone is a way of saying he died for you and even because of you. Sharing in our humanity means the eternal became mortal, the sinless one cursed by human sin and tempted as we are, shows that deep oneness, even at the boundaries 
of our weakness. And then Hebrews 2 goes on to reveal how this grace and power matter above all in how we face our own loss and fear. Listen again to some of these phrases. So Jesus, because of the cross, because of becoming one of us, because of being tempted and suffering, so Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. By his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. In order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted in bringing many sons and daughters to glory. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. You hear that language over and over of being united, of being connected, of belonging, of identifying, and of all the obstacles that would take away our joy in the Lord or our joy in life or, or would keep us separate and isolated all those broken away because he carried the cross for us. Our belonging and identity as children of God, sons and daughters in the family of God, is secured by the cross. He's not ashamed to call you a sister or a brother. Guilt and shame have been removed. All those regrets you carry, every judgment about what if I had done this instead? Or what if I had said that instead? Or what if I had been there? Those are all taken away. Every feeling of separation need not have the final say in your relationships. So intimate is his help that he does not turn from you, even in the midst of your temptation even when you might choose against him and go not the way of the Lord, even then he won't take away his provision and let the temptation further break God's image in you. Our purpose and our destiny are delivered by his deliverance. We need not live in fear of death or loss. Mercy and faithfulness bring the daily power needed into each troubling situation. Holiness and glory mark both the goal and the outcome of faith. Because of the cross, each act of faith brings pleasure to our Creator and testifies to God's goodness. And no guilt or shame or regret has to define us, for we are forgiven. This is the power of the cross and a newness not of our own making results in that union we have with Christ. Okay, so that's what it's saying. That's its power. Let me now apply that for us today. Young people are pressured today to find their own identity. To be authentic for a young person today is to assume that my identity must be of my choosing. So that means I'm on my own. I make my choice independent of the faith I grew up with or any authority over me, including my family. I have to do it myself. That's the pressure our young people are under today. But then we can ask, how will I know if I've chosen well? So I obsess over recognition. I need my friends and my peers to like me, to like what I do and say. I need to put my life on display to get their applause. But how long can I keep up appearances? Can I continue to bring my A game successfully in every situation? I may be happy today, but what about tomorrow? I may look into control, but something like this virus comes along and reminds me, reminds all of us, we're not in control at all. 
in this climate, most parents assume that the highest moral good is to protect our children so that they are free to choose what will make them happy. No wonder there's so much stress. No wonder so many feel that the only way to find themselves is to forsake family and faith and do me my own way. In our striving for control and success and achievement and identity, Hebrews chapter 2 proclaims Jesus. We look at human beings made a little lower than the angels, it says, and we see people who should be in control and who should be conforming this world to the glory of God, but aren't. Aren't in control, aren't able, falling short. And then Hebrews says, but we see Jesus, made like us, who completed all that we long for. So that means our identity doesn't have to be found. It is secured already by the cross. And following the cross, our identity and belonging is strengthened so we can live assured, not pressured. Your identity and belonging are already yours. You are sons and daughters of the Lord God, brothers and sisters of Christ, children of God. What can take that away? Nothing. It's not that you are on your own to find yourself. You are found. You belong body and soul in life and in death to your faithful Savior. And out of that abundant grace, you live. So you see the difference? He has set you free to truly live, not for self, but for Christ and the glory of God. Today's losses are trying to do something to us. It's not just the loss of a job or time or income or peace. Those losses are trying to shape us. All these experiences are, are malforming us. They not only hurt us, they change us by telling us that you deserve this pain. You were meant for this defeat. You're no better than this, that this is you. But Jesus has already suffered the greatest loss. And out of that loving sacrifice, restored what no earthly loss can ever take away again. You can't divide the physical world from the spiritual. The cross has seen to that. Jesus so fully identified with you, he carried your cross so that belonging fully to him, even in the crosses and losses of our own lives, we live with a strength that no fear or temptation nor all the powers of death can match. Not so it won't happen to you again. Not so you won't be hardened and callous to plow your way through next time. Not so you live in pride, but so that you can courageously bear all things as love does without fear. We humbly worship Christ of the cross because experiences of sacrificial love help us get back in shape. So does gratitude, so does worship. So does sharing in the joy or sorrow of another. And so does even sacrifice for something good that is beyond you. These all insist that our history has changed from guilt to innocence at the cross of Christ. And that glory shines through even in this inglorious, out of control season of our lives. Amen. Thank you.
Am I a stone and not a sheep? That I can stand, O Christ, beneath thy cross to number drop by drop thy blood's slow loss and yet not weep? Not so those women loved who with exceeding grief lamented thee. Not so fallen Peter weeping bitterly. Not so the thief was moved. Not so the sun and moon, which hid their faces in a starless sky, a horror of great darkness at broad noon. I, only I. It give not o'er, but seek thy sheep, true shepherd of the flock. Greater than Moses, turn and look once more and smite. There comes a point in everyone's lives where we are called to do something uncomfortable, to go someplace far different, to serve people less fortunate. Sometimes this place is right in our own backyard, neighborhood, or community. Sometimes it's thousands of miles away in an unknown area of the world but the message is always the same. That no matter who you are, Jesus loves you and cares for you. Yeah.
receive now God's blessing as we go into the rest of this Good Friday with anticipation and hope for Easter that is shortly to come in celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus, we wait here by your tomb carrying our grief, the grief of a betrayer, the grief of a denier, the grief of a crucifier. Upon you was laid our grief, guilt, and shame. And it is finished. God of endings, God of darkness, God of the tomb, God of dark days and great loss, be with us now as we wait with Jesus, Lord of sacrificial love, Lord of complete forgiveness, Lord of eternal healing. Amen. You're invited now to spend the last moments of this Good Friday service in reflection silently with thanks and humility. Um, the next little bit will help us just to reflect on that great love and sacrifice given by Jesus Christ on his cross. 